things. You know, I started cooking when I was 15 and I fell in love with it. I went for at least 20 interviews before I got a job. I remember going to one place and a guy saying to me, if the first 10 don't work out, I'll give you a call. Mm. It just wasn't that easy to get work, mm. um, especially a young 15 year old from Blacktown. It just, yeah. it just didn't happen. And I, I got lucky and I fell in love with it. Um, and it was great for me because I needed the discipline. You know, we were working, we were working 90 hours a week at La Belle Helene mm. and I was 15 years of age, but I needed it because I was a bit of a wild boy. And I think with anything in life, if you love it, you know, it, it kind of, it's easy. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a famous saying, you know, you, you do something you love yeah. in life, you never have to work another day. And I truly believe that. Um, and same with all, a lot of the other guys, you know, the Guillaumes and the Colin Fastings, yeah, they were, you know, poor families, you know, thrown into work and, mm. and they fell in love with it. Mm. They absolutely love what they do. Mm. You know, I, I love what I do. I get up every morning and think, what am I going to eat today? Mm. You know, people are surprised by my, my Instagram on how often I actually cook at home. Yeah. How has it changed since you were like 20? Like, what's the difference, including like people's perception of what it means to be a chef? You know, it's, it's, over the, over the last sort of you know, 10, 20, 30 years, um, you know, people have travelled a lot more, they've seen a lot more, um, and, and food has changed. So there's so much more on offer, and people, people care about what they're putting in their mouths. People want to know how it's handled, how it's bred, how it's grown, whether it's organic, and, and you know, they, they care about what they put in their mouths because their knowledge is so much better. You're the most well-known chef in Australia. Yeah. How does that happen? And I think the one that really sort of resonated with a lot of people, MasterChef obviously publicly, you know, like highest rating TV show in, in the country at that point in time. And people would recognise and go, oh, there's Matt Moran. Mm. But they wouldn't, they'd just talk about you. Yeah. When I started doing Paddock the Plate, the idea of that was to, to um, something I'm really passionate about and that's farming mm. and, and the farmers and sort of telling their stories because they're the unsung heroes. But people all of a sudden, you know, were saying, there's Matt Moran, oh my God, I cooked your Brussels sprouts the other night. They wanted to talk to you. They wanted to talk, rather than just saying, you're the, you're the celebrity on, on that TV show, they actually wanted to yeah. engage and talk about food. And, and to me that really, you know, I loved it mm. because I can talk about food all day. Mm. I've always had the thing, you know, whenever I've done anything on TV, own interviews, I'm, I'm myself, you mm. know, I just talk. Mm. And I, I've, from day one when I did my restaurant rules and they'll try to produce me, I'm, I'm like, no, mm. you know, I'll be myself mm. because I don't want to be a different person on, on screen than yeah. what I am in real life. Um, and I've always made that very clear. Especially coming into um, this period of, you know, the lockouts, there's small restaurants and small bars struggling. Yeah. If you were 22 year old Matt, entering into this kind of restaurant and or food and bar climate, like what would you want to know? You know, I, I'd want to, you know, it, it's all about, um, you know, getting ready for it and, and, and um, doing your figures, doing mm -hmm. your projections, you know, working out what costs, working out how much money you're actually going to make. Um, whenever we do any business, we've got three or four now that we're building mm -hmm. um, at the moment, you know, and it's all about, you know, what is the potential? What is, if it doesn't do as well as what we want it to, you know, what is uh, the projection on, on the low side, mm. you know, to make sure that you actually are covering costs. Mm. Um, and that's really important, you know, mm. to not just do open it and go, let's just see how we go. Mm. It doesn't work like that. You know, you've really got to, you've really got to plan and map out, you know, mm. what that place is and a narrative, you know, um, give itself, give it, give it a, give it a theme, mm. you know, like Chiswick is a classic example. Mm. Um, you know, when we first looked at it, you know, I wasn't that interested in it because it was always a fine dining restaurant. Mm. And I always thought, well, it's going to compete with Aria. Yeah. And then someone said, you know, why don't you just do food that you want to eat? Mm. I never eat at Aria. I've eaten there three times in 17 years. Uh. It's my most important restaurant. Yeah. Um, but I don't feel comfortable eating in it because, you know, that's the only place that I really, yeah. you know, sort of hang out and work in the kitchen, mm. you know, or oversee the kitchen. Mm. Here, I've never spent a, a minute in the kitchen, but I own it. But yeah. I eat here at least two yeah. or three times a week. What are your perceptions of people? How important are people to the experience? 20 years ago, I'd say it was only the food, yeah. being a chef, yeah. you know, and not realising. Um, the most important thing in any restaurant is warmth and, and people. Mm. You know, I say to, to all my guys, 
um, you know, that first initial contact is the most important. Um, and service, service to me, is, it's, it's so important, that engaging, you know, and, and you know, I, I've backflipped from when I was a young chef that it was all about the food. It's not, it's all about the experience. And, mm. and nowadays, you can't be a restaurant with just good food. Mm. You've got to have good service. You know, you've got to have a comfortable seat. You've got to have a good acoustics. Mm. Um, you know, you've, you've got to have a good wine list. You've got to have good food. You've got to have all of it. Mm.